So why does the sand around your feet appear to dry up when you're walking on a wet beach? It's actually quite a common feature of sands and soils, called the Reynolds dilatancy. To demonstrate this, we fill the container with sand and saturated it with water. To replicate the beach scenario, so, just as on the beach, as the sand is pressed, the sand appears to be drying up. While you'd expect the water to go out of the sand when you apply pressure to it, just like a sponge, this is not what actually happens. This is because the space between the sand and the grains becomes larger when stressed. This is called dilation of the granulated substance. A simplified explanation of this is as follows. Imagine the sand to be grains in a roster, and they are pretty densely packed. When the grains experience shear stress, the grains are forced out of their dense packing. The shear stress will push them in different angles. This will result in less dense sand, with a bigger volume. Higher pressure results in more volume and gives space for liquids and gases to get in between the spaces of the grains. If the packing is loose, the opposite happens. The stress on the sand causes the loose packing to compress. For the second experiment, we use the same container with saturated sand, but it's saturated up to a certain height. On top is a layer of drier sand, which provides stability for the rocks on top of it. Buried in the sand is a ping pong ball. When we shake the container, the stones appear to sink, while the ping pong ball appears to float. This phenomenon is called soil liquefaction. It's a phenomenon that occurs in a real world with dangerous consequences. During earthquakes, even buildings can sink into the ground as a result of soil liquefaction, in which saturated soil loses strength in response to an applied stress. Soil liquefaction is caused by Reynolds dilatancy. Initially, the bottom layer of sand is saturated and loosely packed, while the top layer is less saturated and densely packed. Then, after some time, a repeated stress is applied to the container. As we know, when a densely packed granulated substance is stressed, the space between the grains is dilated, giving room for liquid. This is what happens to the top layer. On the other hand, because the bottom layer is loosely packed, the stress causes compression of the sand. As a result, the water will be pushed out of the spaces between the grains. Because the water pressure increases, the water attempts to flow out of zones of lower pressure. Therefore, the amount of water in the upper layer of the sand will increase. Because the grains are able to move freely in this layer, the sand will behave as a liquid as seen in the experiment. The ping pong ball floats and the stones sink. After the repeated stress has stopped, the grains will reorganize and become more compact. The grains will be packed more densely and behave like a solid again. There is less space for water between the grains, so the water stays mostly on top of the sand. Without water, the grains will not move very easily. We tried it, and it turns out the sand is too rigid to move without the water present. The stones don't sink into the sand, and the ping pong ball doesn't float at all. This was our demonstration of Reynolds' latency and especially soil liquefaction. If you like these kinds of videos, subscribe to the Fluids and Soft Matter channel for more videos about interesting science topics.